Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Just recently, I did a video on Godot for AAA game development. Basically, what is it missing for A or AAA style games? And one of the most glaringly obvious things that it's missing is a train plugin. Now, the nice thing is we're going to cover today how you can get around that. So right now, there is a plugin available for Godot 3.5. Uh, it is called the Godot Height Map plugin. And we're going to show you how you could go ahead and use this if you want to create train in the Godot game engine today. We're going to do it step by step all the way through beginning to end. So let's just get started. Started. So first thing first, we're going to have to go ahead and grab this repository because uh, this is where our plugin exists. So fire up a command prompt or a terminal, go to the most important directory on your computer, which is known as temp, get clone, and then paste in that direct that uh, this. The, the repository uh, site. So this is going to go ahead and download our uh, required add-on files. So now what we're going to do is head on over to Godot. Again, this is for Godot 3.x. I'm using uh, 3.5.1, which is the most current stable release. Go ahead and create a new project. We'll call this Terrain in Vain. And over here, again, most important directory, C colon slash temp. Now, obviously, you can create it wherever you want. I'm creating it in temp. And we'll go ahead and create that folder. All right. So we are good to go. This, our project is up and going. Here, our thing continued and finished downloading. So what we're going to do now is open up an Explorer window in that directory. And what you want to do is grab the add-ons folder from inside of what we just downloaded. And then go back and in your new project, paste the add-ons folder in. That's it. That's all you need to do. And now come over here. It's going to import those scripts. And you're going to go up here and go to Projects, Project Settings, uh, Plugins. And then you're just going to enable it. All right, good to go. So once that is done, you create a 3D scene like so. And inside of 3D scene, when you add a new node in and you search for the word terrain, you're going to find the H terrain node. Perfect. Okay, we'll go ahead and we will create that right now. So this thing is going to give us a bit of an error. It needs a data directory. Nothing really special there. All we do is come over here to where it says data directory. We click on this guy right here. Uh, we can say uh, create a new folder and we'll call this terrain data. And we will say, okay. And we will select that folder. And then immediately it will create our train. Now, what you'll notice is our train is a little bit big for our world. I'm just going to come up here and we're going to just change the map scale 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Much more manageable. We're good to go. So there is our terrain object right now. It is a typical 3D object. So obviously you can move it around this. You should be able to move it around the scene. All right. Maybe you can't. I'm confused. Hmm. All right, well, here, we'll at least center it. It doesn't look like you can move it, which is very strange. All right, so there is our train object in the world. Now you can go about, you know, drawing your train. Now, if I go over here, you're going to see at this top, we have this toolbar here. This is where the majority of your tools are. So what you can do here is basically start raising the train. And if you look really close, you zoom in, see there's like that little circle right there. Well, that's because our brush is pretty small. We're going to bring up these tools over here, and we're going to click this little brush guy right there. And we can go ahead, and we make that guy a little bit bigger. So what now... Our brush is much more large. Uh, we also changed the opacity of the brush, which is the amount that it's going to affect the scene. And now we can start drawing. And there is our train being raised immediately. So pretty simple. So that is uh, the train painting tool, the, the raising of the train. You also have this one right here for predictably enough lowering the train. So if you want to have a valley or a lower area, you can paint it that way. Uh, pretty simple. Again, we have smoothing. So we come in here and we can smooth i think that's smoothing let me check that out yeah smoothing height so you smooth off the edges of your terrain uh then we've got over here which is a average level smoothing kind of brings it down a little bit more drastically and then we have this one here which is for flattening so if you want to create more of like a plateau surface you can do so with the flatten brush like that and then finally in terms of the uh, painting tools you have an erosion brush which simulates years and years of erosion in milliseconds there you go for as if it was raining down that train and kind of smoothing it out over time so those are the basic tools you need for editing your height map nothing really uh, that special about it but what you're going to notice is your your colors are kind of hideous right here right so what you probably want to do is paint them and that's where we get into these tools right here so we've got the ability to paint for the texture and we paint with a single color so come down here pick the color so we can make a red blotch and there so if you want to just paint your train using paint tools you got that option but it's probably not going to give you the best results what you want to probably do is this guy right here so this is going to be painting with oops no sorry this guy right here which is basically texture painting and what you're going to need now is a handful of textures now i'm going to go to a website called ambient cg they've got almost 2,000 assets available for free head on over here and then what we're going to do is grab a couple of assets first off we want uh, say grass 
It's important, by the way, which one you uh, pick first, because that's going to be sort of the default. We'll just grab the 1K JPEG version of it right here. And then I'm going to go back and we will grab another thing, say, uh, I, I want like a ground cover. So let's look sand. Okay, here we go. Nice coarse ground. And again, the 1K JPEG version of that. Head on over to our downloads folder like so. And then you can see those two zip files are down there. We just basically want to extract each one. Like so. And again, like so. So there is our grass. There is our ground. Grab those, copy them, head on back over to your project directory that you created earlier on, and just paste those two folders in. You can put them in like an assets folder, a texture folder, or whatever you wish. You're going to notice inside of each one of these is a number of different maps, more so than we actually need. Uh, but you've got your displacement, height map, color map, uh, occlusion maps, and so on in here. So now that we've got that, we head on back over to Godot. It will import all of our assets in and done. Okay, so now what you head on down here, you'll notice you've got the options here for textures. And you've got options here for uh, the, the map that we're going to paint on. I'll show you that in a second. So I'm going to go here. We're going to import in the texture. Now, the first one you import in is what is going to apply by default. So come here. We'll go load. Oh, sorry. Create one. Now, one thing I've noticed that seems to be lacking is I don't know how to rename this. So if I want to call this grass, I don't see any way to actually go about doing that. It might be a user error thing, but may not. I'm not sure. So go here, grass, pick your color channel. And what it's done is uh, by the file names, uh, it just guessed the underscore ex extension for the rest of these, except for normal map. Because you're going to notice these have slightly different normal maps. In this case, we'll pick normal map underscore normal GL, bring that one in. And this guy is done. We'll import that asset in. And you'll notice here it automatically filled it in except for where we drew our red before. So now we want to go ahead and create our other material. So just go here, create another one, load that in, and then we'll just go back up to that other folder right here, pick its color channel like so, and it'll fill everything in again, except for the normal, pick the GL version of the normal, import that texture set in, and you are good to go. So now if you want to go ahead and start painting the color of your terrain, uh, you can do that again with the paint tool selected down here, your brush control is over here. So if you want to make it a little bit smaller, you can do there. If you want to change the opacity of it right there. And if you've got an actual uh, brush, uh, like a, a stylus, you can actually enable stylish and have the the way that you're using the stylish, the presser of sensitivity, etc., affect the painting. I'm using a mouse, so I'm not going to showcase that. But here we've got the one texture and the other texture. Now what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to click Add. What you're going to notice here is this created a terrain detail layer. And there's a bunch of things you can do with this layer. Uh, you can create a texture for it to work on. You can do custom shaders and so on. And we also have the ability for instance mesh. So I could create an instance mesh here of something like uh, grass or foliage that I can go ahead and paint using this guy right here. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to show you texture painting at this point in time. And I'll also show you the documentation later on. So if you want to learn more, you can do so. But I want to keep this video to about the 10 minute mark. So I'm just going to show you texture painting here. So I can come in here now, pick my texture painting and basically start, well, painting the texture. Very cool. And again, uh, there's nothing to stop you from making tweaks later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something very slopey. So another thing I can showcase here. So let's get out the grass texture, paint the heck out of that guy. All right. So there we go. Uh, you can also do something over here. You've got a slope limit. So you can limit the, uh, the slope levels that that guy will paint on. So see how it's really high slope won't paint there. So if you want to have different layers, uh, so like as you're climbing up a mountain or whatever, uh, if you want to have snow peaks at the top, you could make this the slope limit like here, I think. And then basically you can only paint really at the peak kind of point. Uh, I don't know exactly how these two settings interact. Uh, but as you can see, you can use it for uh, doing height-based terrain painting. Now, another thing that's very common in terrain is, let's say I wanted to have a cave. So I wanted to have uh, a cave in my wonderful terrain, say, right over here. How do I go about doing that? Well, that's where we use this one last tool, the shovel over here. And now what you can do is actually, yeah, let's make that a little bit smaller. Um, you can punch holes in your terrain. So if you want to do here, boom, it just basically cuts a hole in the mesh uh, right there. So that your height map has a hole in it. So then what you could do is add in, um, you know, a, a, a polygonal cave area that is cut into your underlying train. So if you need to cut holes into your train, you can use the cut hole brush like so. And that is basically making uh, holes. So we go down underneath because I, I don't have the right clip viewing on, but it's basically cutting uh, holes into your height map train. So if you do need to do something like a cave system, you can do it using uh, that cut holes brush. The only thing again that I'm not covering here is again, it's using the brushes and the, uh, the, the value select over here uh, to paint like grass into your world or trees or whatever. Uh, you could create also, by the way, you can create multiple of these train detail layers like so. So if you want to have different 
different kinds of configurations across your train, different uh, meshes to paint, etc., or even custom shaders. You can do them using these various different terrain layers. So that is the, the basics of it in uh, 9 minutes, 55 seconds. All right, great. So head on over here. Uh, if you're interested in checking it out, again, it is available. Uh, Zland Godot height map plugin. Um, it has been updated, so it was last updated about two months ago. It is getting updates. I'd be interested to see if he ports it to Godot 4. Godot 4 is eventually going to get train, uh, but it could be 4.2, 4.3. It's literally just in the planning stage now. So if you're looking for a train system for the Godot game engine, this is definitely a good choice. Some justification of why it's implemented as GDScript as opposed to a plugin. And I find the performance is more or less fine. So... I don't see their need to rewrite it as a module, but as you're interested, all of the stuff there. So for example, if you want to come in here and learn how to do uh, work with the detail layers for placing meshes around the scene uh, by assigning an instance mesh, you can figure that out through the details layer documentation. You can also create your own custom ground shaders. So if you want to have like a water shader or shaders for grass or, or so on, it's all documented here. There are examples to actually walk you through how to do it. So uh, this guy is kind of a turnkey solution for just about any kind of train you want to create, as long as you are using Godot 3. 3.x. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. One way to create train using a Godot plugin in Godot 3.x. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.